a safe space for St. Louis to learn about soccer. This is Soccer 101 with Michelle Smallman and Moon Valjean. It's Moon and Michelle. Welcome into episode two of Soccer 101. Thanks for hanging out with us today. Moon, how are you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you for asking. How are you? I'm doing well. We're actually in studio together. Welcome back to town. (laughs) Thank you. Uh, It's been so great to be back in St. Louis. And I have to tell you, I was downtown over the weekend. I saw the stadium lit up at night. And boy, is she a beaut. Centene Stadium, they did it right. It really is cool. I got a tour. um, I've had a few tours now. One with a hard hat, you know, and that kind of stuff when they were doing the ticket stuff. I went in recently, which is pretty much finished, like almost completely finished. They even have the food vendor areas and all that kind of stuff set up, which by the way, we'll get into the food uh, because they came in on the Riz show. Uh, Beast, uh, Beast Craft Barbecue brought us a sandwich and they uh, released everything that Gerard Craft and City have done with the food. But man, that stadium is freaking gorgeous. And I mean, down to the accents, that city red, all oh. the little uh, sconce lighting. And the, did you see the badge lit up? Oh my oh. goodness, it's beautiful. The badge lit up is such a special touch with that red outline, as you were mentioning. By the way, this is Soccer 101, the safe yeah, hey. space for St. Louis to learn about soccer. <laughs> Episode number two. Yeah, we probably should have done that at the beginning, but the intent of this podcast is for us to help St. Louis learn about soccer in a non-judgmental way. A lot of people in St. Louis are sports fans, and they're really excited about St. Louis City SC kicking off in the spring, and we're here to help you learn about soccer and about the MLS, but sorry to jump the gun on that, but I was just so excited to see the stadium, and I want to get into you getting a tour there because I haven't been in it since before there was grass on the field. So I need you oh, to be wow. my eyes and ears and tell me what it looks like. Um, well, I had a brief tour. We ran through. I was down there with Together Credit Union, one of the lead sponsors. You see all the Together Credit Union stuff. They have the uh, that Together Credit Union uh, area down there. They also, man, with their new debit card, you know, that, that uh, St. Louis City SC debit card they've yeah. been talking about? One of the guys that was given the tour was even saying, and I don't know how this technology works, but is even saying, like, when you go into the to the uh, the general food vendor area, when you're grabbing a water or a whatever else they, they have there, if you have that card somehow it just like checks you out so there's not really a line or anything that you deal with so not only do you, do you get the 10% off and the express entry but you have all this technology working for you I can't explain how the tech works but um, pretty amazing and I did learn a ton about the stadium I'm sure we'll get into it um, so real quick you mean to tell me that it's going to be touchless payment so basically I can have my hot dog in one hand my St. Louis craft beer in the other and just walk through something without even having to get my credit card out don't quote me on it but the guy started explaining it. he lost me a little bit with how the tech <laughs> works but I went wait a second and that's how you just described it is exactly how I visualized it and it is so beautiful how they have it set up they really did meticulously make I mean you think you know it's a soccer stadium it's a uh, pretty basic uh, rectangle and this and that man they thought of every little detail about how you're going to get in or out of there in the corners uh, that huge I guess uh, atrium area mm-hmm. that's out that's on the east side of it absolutely gorgeous down to where the sun is going to be for the majority of the games they thought of every little detail for the fan experience and for the player experience which is pretty spectacular that is and people don't realize how much the sun can play into stuff like that not only for the players with shadows and uh, temperature and things like that but imagine being a fan and being so excited to spend your money and support this team and then you're sitting in a space where the sun is directly in your eyes the entire game. That would be miserable. Yeah, it, there's not going to be anything that is miserable about this stadium experience. Even if it's raining out there, like you are pretty much covered. It's absolutely gorgeous. So you, you saw the grass this last time you were down there? No, so the last time I was there was, oh gosh, it was a while ago. But it was, uh, I got a behind the scenes look of the construction and there was no grass down yet. We, we had to wear basically construction boots because we were walking through gravel and yeah. mud. And it was cold. So it was about springtime last year. Excuse me, the fall of last year, I think. It's been a minute oh, since I've been wow. in there. Yeah, Things it's been are a minute. drastically yeah, different. Yeah, you got to fill me in. I'm dying to go in there. So when you walk in, uh, like I said, it's got this big giant uh, plaza area in the front. There's just going to be hangouts. I'm sure they're going to have tents and all these different things. And if, if it's one of those places you can tell, even if you don't have a ticket to go in the stadium, it's going to be an experience just to be in that area down for the games. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Uh, a tailgate esque experience without the tailgate or the parking lot, you're in this big giant area with like-minded sports fans. You know what I mean? So when you walk in, there are uh, entrances at all the different, uh, all the corners. It's really nice and wide open. When you walk in, the coolest thing, I've been to a lot of different stadiums in England and Europe, and um, one of the cool things, not being at your seat yet, is kind of feeling like you're in this tight space, these corridors and whatever, and it has that while still feeling very wide and open. So it's not going to be one of those, I'm stuck shoulder to shoulder, getting weirded out by people too close to me sort of vibe. You know, You know what I'm saying? 
and yet it's going to have this really intimate feeling. And then all of a sudden, you get to where the seats are, and you see this big, beautiful stadium that's lit up with that city red. And then you see the green, mm. and the grass looks like turf, but I assure you, it is not turf. It is whatever you know, weird rye grass they use. But they now have the UV lights, you know, the the things that go over it, and they're taking care of that grass meticulously. Oh, it's wow. not even being stepped on, and they are. It's a, it's a million dollar grass. It is freaking beautiful. And just kind of jumping the gun a, a little bit, talking about the uh, the field, one of the other things I learned, and I'm a lifelong soccer player and soccer fan, but I did not realize that there are not specific regulations for the widths and lengths of the pitch, hmm. which That's allows... Surprising. Yeah, it was surprising. Now, obviously the goal, you know, you got to, uh, that those, uh, all those parameters are the exact same no matter where you go, the six yard box, but the actual pitch itself at St. Louis City SC is narrower than a lot of the other ones. Maybe it may be the narrowest. We'll have to get the details on that. It okay. may be the narrowest field in the league. And that is designed so the team from scratch builds a philosophy and a strategy that's based on high intense attacking and counterattacking ball. Mm -hmm. It's not a wide play sort of team. So the cool thing about that is half the games are going to be played at home. Right. On our field, on with our strategy in mind. It's almost and I hate to make this this comparison because I freaking hate the Boston Red Sox. But it's a catered park. Be careful. It's, We're in St. Louis. You, 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 you know <laughs> what careful. I'm saying? The Red Sox park can cater to them. Yeah. And they have a DH, so they're like, oh, okay, well, let's let's get a guy who can hit it only 300 feet because this wall is so much closer in. So you kind of get a designer team based around the pitch itself. And that's what I've heard. You, I know you have a lot more information as far as the coaching and all that with the, with the strategies go. But isn't that cool to find out that like you can kind of design the philosophy of the team around the actual dimensions of the pitch. It's all working concurrently together. It's like a confluence of things in order for them to have success on the field, which I think is so cool. And you're right, especially in baseball, sta certain stadiums are perfect for certain players. If there's a short porch, you know that certain guys are going to be able to hit more ho home runs that they might not get at a place like maybe Bush Stadium or, uh, you know, in Chicago where the wind comes in. There's a lot of different factors in different ballparks where you look at certain players and you look at their style of play or what their strengths and weaknesses are that you know that they're going to translate well to that particular stadium. So I think for St. Louis City SC, who does want to have a very high attacking pressing style to craft the, the pitch in order to help them maximize what they want to be their philosophy is really smart and it's really cool. It's going to be awesome, especially for the fan experience. It is going to be fast paced, super high energy pressing, I almost said football, pressing soccer. And so if they put all that kind of uh, 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 detail and thought into the style of play on the pitch, believe me, they did the exact same for the fan experience. So the fan, the 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 standing wall where the uh, supporter section is going to yes, be. Yes, I have so many questions about the stands and the setup. Oh my gosh, it is so cool looking. There is not a bad seat. And I know this sounds like some sort of advertisement and it's all horse crap that, <laughs> that most people say about, you know, like uh, baseball stadiums or football stadiums. There's not a bad seat in the house. I'm telling you, we got to get the distance here, but you are no further than like a hundred something feet, even in the farthest place that you can be. But every corner, there's tables, there's areas. So if you have that hot dog and beer and you don't want to take it to your seat, there's plenty of places to, to eat it and, oh, to there's still, congregation areas? and still be watching the pitch. Now, there's wow. also lo the loge boxes and the different places. We're talking like cushioned leather city red seats. It is freaking beautiful. And I don't know what they're called, but there are seats on the pitch that have tables and oh, leather yeah. seats. Those are the baller seats. Oh, my Those are like goodness. the green seats, but not. You, yeah, but, but you got to see you're it. on the pitch. And you better keep your eyes up because you're going to get hit by a ball. Love I, that. I'm telling you, it is so cool. Now, a black back, eye souvenir. Yeah, but back to this. Uh, I'm I mean, here's the thing. You are like six feet from the bench. So if you, well, know, you can hear everything, too. You That's the one thing everything. I love about when you go to games and especially if you're on field level, you can hear everything that's going on. It gives you such a different perspective of the game and of what coaches are seeing or players are seeing. I mean, imagine if you're on the sidelines of an NFL game and Tom Brady comes over and he's screaming at the O-line and you're so close that you can hear what he says. You're yeah. going to be able to hear Bradley Carnell screaming at players. Oh, yeah. Or maybe talking to them nice, nicely. We don't know his sure, coaching sure, style sure. yet. But uh, to be able to hear them say, Hey, 
Chicago's doing this. We need to attack them this way and then watch it play out in real time. That's going to be really cool. If you have the dough to have those seats. Yeah, you'll be hearing all of that. And like I said, keep your head up because uh, those balls are going to be flying all around. And it is a very, very fast-paced game, especially when you're down there. The last time I was in London, I went to a Chelsea match and I got to see Pulisic and nice. uh, and, and some other folks. And I was four rows up, so I was le- eye level with their hips, basically. Must be nice. It was incredible. <laughs> and the, the greatest part of the experience not only was, like I said uh, in episode one, was seeing some of the uh, players off the ball and how they're moving. But like you said, the, the tone of their voice. Who's really captaining the field as far as the players go? How are they speaking to one another? You know, because you, you see them hollering, but like, who's, you know, how are they listening? Or yeah. How are they speaking to one another? I know it doesn't maybe sound fascinating to some, but I'm telling you that is part of the experience in this sport that you don't get in a lot of other sports. Uh, the supporter section, yes, where, where, where they're all standing, is the steepest that it is allowed to be. Oh, the wow. Absolute steepest. Does so that it, carry sound differently? Yes, for sure. It's because they be did a, that in Seattle. Yeah. You know, they talk about the 12th man. When I went there yep. for a Rams game, RIP St. Louis Rams, back in the day, I remember the our broadcast booth was shaking and they were telling me that the way, I think at the time it was Century Link Stadium, the link, the way that the, the awnings came over, it was specifically designed to capture sound because yes. they want the 12th man to be so loud. Yes. So I'm not surprised with all the intentionality that's being put behind everything. If they're thinking about the fact that you can grab your hot dog and your craft beer and touchlessly enter this, your seat, I'm not surprised that making the supporter section the loudest and rowdiest in MLS and doing that from a, an audio and a sound standpoint, I'm not surprised that those things were thought of. Yeah, it's going to be thunderous. It will be an absolute wall of sound, especially with St. Louis fans and all the supporter groups that we have from the Luligans to everybody else. It's going to be rowdy. It's going to be thunderous. And honestly, if you're an opponent, you're going to know really fast that this is a difficult place to play. Uh, and again, that. that's so St. Louis, right? We want, we miss the Tony LaRusa intimidation factor. We love that Craig Berube is chief and he's so yep. tough. And yep. that's, that feels very St. Louis that the fans would love people to be intimidated to come to Centene Stadium and have to play this team. For sure. And, and I think it goes down to, you know, a lot of people, um, Raz the team about the colors and all that kind of stuff, but it is such a unique color. And it's since it's a soccer specific and St. Louis City SC specific stadium, they're not sharing it with a baseball team or a football team or that kind of stuff. So, like you said, the intentionality of all of it is going to make it an incredibly intimidating space because you're going to come in, it's going to be filled with this one particular city red color and the accent colors, and you're going to have a wall of thunderous drums and cheering that's facing you, almost seems like it's coming down over on top of you, raining on you. It's such a cool spot. I'm really impressed and I'm hard to impress. I've been to a lot of stadiums, always find my problems and my troubles with them because you know, it's kind of our job yeah. as, as like intense fans that if, if they're going to get the intensity and the fandom out of us to buy the jersey every single year and all that, then they need to deliver a lot. We haven't even seen a match yet and they've delivered a lot. So I want to roll back to su- the supporter section for a second because we need to be cognizant of the fact that a lot of people listening, I know we talked a little bit about supporters last week, but and we're going to really drill into St. Louis City and their supporters in a later podcast. But one thing that's really cool about soccer and about this specific section is the chanting and the songs and all of that because we don't get that in baseball here in St. Louis. We don't get that in hockey. And I think it's going to be really cool for people who aren't super familiar with soccer to go to that stadium and have that experience for the first time and realize that there's going to be nonstop cheering and chanting and songs throughout the entirety of the game. There will be, absolutely. There has been uh, since the Athletica was here. Mm-hmm. And the uh, St. Louis FC. We've had a lot of couple, uh, a lot of different teams come through in the last decade or two, and these supporter groups have only grown and grown and grown. And the nicest thing about St. Louisans um, and and the St. Louis supporter groups is they're super inclusive. Yes. So th- I'm sure they're going to do all that they can to make sure that these songs are learnable and they're they're great hopefully we get some sort of giant anthem that is very st louis specific similar to what my buddy has done over at rsl at real salt lake uh he did the song i uh, believe it's become their whole their whole thing their whole chant their whole motto and it all started with just him and a punk band saying i really want to do this he put it out there and uh every place you know kind of finds its personality within its music within its chants and all that and i'm sure it's not going to take long and if you're just a first timer that's going in there you're going to be blown away by the vibe volume, the intensity, mm-hmm. uh, and and just the, the collective nature of, of everybody in this type of sport. But it is very inclusive. So feel free to try to figure out what they're saying. They may be passing out lyric sheets, which say, they have done before. There's going to be a way, whether it's through the app or, um, you know, literature that we 
get that we'll share on this podcast. And then, of course, you'll share on The Riz Show. They're going to make sure that anybody who wants the lyrics or to learn these songs and chants are going yeah. to be able to do it. We're going to get that out there for everybody. For but sure. I just think about when the Blues won the Stanley Cup and Gloria was the anthem and you couldn't go anywhere without hearing Gloria or after they won. Think about how much fun that was down the stretch when the Blues would win and they we would scream play Gloria and we would celebrate with that song. You don't have that now with the Blues. You don't have that now with the Cardinals. Right. How cool is it going to be when City wins a match and we're all flooding out of Centene Stadium and everybody's chanting and or singing a song together. I just think that's going to be such a, a galvanizing thing for our sports community to have that that little musical aspect that kind of ties us all together. You said it. We are a musical city. It's part of the soccer culture and it's already part of our town. It's, it's going to be a beautiful marriage and it'll be natural. That's it for episode two. Episode three is coming in just a few days and it's all about your emails. Make sure you subscribe and hit the notifications button so you can be alerted when the next episode is up. No question is a bad question, so email your questions, your guest suggestions, or just your favorite and least favorite parts of the show so far to asksoccer101 at gmail.com. That's asksoccer101 at gmail.com. We'll see you next time on Soccer 101.